Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Honda Accord V6 EXL two-door manual. Now as far as the interior, for the driver you've got electronic adjustment in the seat and there's actually plenty of adjustments so that you've got plenty of legroom, plenty of headroom as well. It does seem a little bit limited but you can lower the seat a good amount more and you also do have telescoping and height adjustment for the steering wheel so you can get a nice driving position. As far as the interior in here it is nice. You've got these two displays for the infotainment as well as the climate controls and as far as visibility looking out the front it's actually pretty good to the sides as well checking the rear overall visibility all around is pretty nice in here now the drawback of this is when you do sit in the rear seats headroom and legroom are both pretty cramped so it's really just kind of a nice for two-seater as far as tall adults um, and there are three seats back there but the middle is pretty useless and the two on the sides you do have to be a little bit shorter in order to sit back there under the hood is a 3.5 liter naturally acid aspirated V6 engine. It uses a single overhead cam system with variable valve timing, lift, and duration with four valves per cylinder. It features an aluminum block and heads and produces 278 horsepower at 6200 rpm and 252 pound-feet of torque at 4900 rpm. If you opt for the automatic transmission, the engine has a slightly higher compression ratio of 10.5 to 1 versus 10.0 to 1, as well as cylinder deactivation. This leads to better fuel economy versus the manual transmission we're looking at here here. For the manual, it's rated 18 miles per gallon in the city, 28 on the highway, and I managed just over 30 miles per gallon in my own testing. It's worth noting that it does take regular octane gas. As tested, MSRP comes to 31745 so what's it like to drive? Well, after I'd been driving it for a while, I thought, you know, the car didn't feel all that heavy. So I looked up how much it weighed, just under 3,400 pounds. So it is actually a decently heavy car, but I didn't think it was heavy and not necessarily because of how it handled, but because of how it accelerates. When you put your foot down, it's got some really good pull to it. It's actually pretty impressive. This car has a better power to weight ratio than a Mitsubishi Evo, the one that I tested, the MR. On top of that, the gearing is actually really aggressive. You can see wheel slip there in second gear, just about 5,000 RPM at 40 miles an hour. Even at those high speeds, and yes, the road is a little bit wet, but it can still spin the tires. There's a lot of torque going to those front wheels. And yes, you do get a little bit of torque steer when you put your foot down hard, uh, but if you do kind of modulate it and get into it slowly, you don't really notice it. As far as the suspension, it's somewhere between sporty and comfortable. Um, you know, it's, it does absorb bumps well, and you don't really notice it all that much, uh, but on the same side, you don't seem to notice too much body roll. Certainly does have some, but not that much compared to some of the other vehicles which I've tested. And so it is nice, you know, somewhere in the nice happy medium as far as the suspension stiffness. Both the throttle pedal and the brake pedal seem pretty easy to modulate. They don't have, you know, any spikes in them or anything like that. The throttle is fairly punchy though, um, and it just seems to be the naturally aspirated engine has a lot of torque uh, even at low RPM. And so as you do put your foot down, you can get great throttle response and you get a immediate torque. Coming into some corners here, the car does seem to handle fairly neutrally. You do get a little bit of understeer when you push it, and you certainly get understeer if you put your foot down on the gas pedal, as it's very easy to spin the front tires in a corner, especially if you're in second gear or lower. Now the ground's a little bit wet here today, so I'm not pushing it too much, and there's also a bit of debris on the road. Um, but you know, it does seem to handle pretty well, and not all that much understeer, so it can be fun in these corners, and it does have a ton of power once you straighten up and pull out. What I do like about the manual transmission is the gearing. They have geared it fairly aggressively, and so you get an abundance of torque. There you can feel some torque steer, uh, but it's really nice to be able to shift through the gears. First gear ending around 38 miles per hour, second gear ending right around 60 miles per hour. So it makes it fun to drive on uh, these back roads. You can get, you know, shift between the gears and also get plenty of torque. Now the sacrifice made, I believe, is the fuel economy rating. This is rated 18 in the city, 28 on the highway, and that's really not that impressive. My Subaru WRX STI is 17 in the city, so just one less, and a 2015-2016 Corvette Stingray, 29 on the highway, and this is 28 on the highway, so one less than a Corvette. And obviously this isn't as sporty as either of those cars, yet it's getting the same fuel economy. And so that's a little bit disappointing, but I think part of that is the gearing. They have geared it aggressively, and had they compensated with gearing, uh, you know, it wouldn't be quite the same story, but the car wouldn't be as fun. So I'm all for it. I do like the gearing. 
The other thing is, the automatic version of this has cylinder deactivation, and it also has a slightly higher compression ratio. Now, I'm not sure about the gearing, it's probably a little bit less aggressive, and so overall the automatic does return better fuel economy if that's what you're concerned about. As far as the steering, it doesn't seem to offer a whole lot of feedback, but it does seem to be fairly precise as far as turn in and response, um, so as far as that's concerned, it's okay, you know, nothing special, um, you know, a little bit more geared towards comfort rather than sportiness, but overall not bad. Another thing worth mentioning as far as the manual or automatic is concerned, the manual does weigh 120 pounds, about lighter than the automatic transmission, so a significant weight saving if you do go with the manual transmission, so that would certainly be my recommendation. Now as far as the clutch pedal, it doesn't use all of the travel, in fact the last uh, about half of it, it doesn't really do anything. It's towards the top end where you start to bite the clutch, uh, but it's not all the way at the top. There's a little bit at the top as well which isn't doing much. So I'm not really thrilled about how the clutch feels. I like a wider range of use uh, in clutch pedals, um, but this is very similar to what it's like in my Acura Integra. Most of it's towards the top and you know it doesn't take up the whole range. It seems to be a little easier for me uh, to get into a car and get used to it a lot faster if it does use the entire range and it starts right when you start lifting your foot. But that said, you can get used to something like this and it certainly wouldn't be a concern. It's just a very narrow band at which you're actually engaging the clutch. All right, so I'm going to try out a zero to 60 test, but I have a lot of disclaimers that are gonna go along with this. First of all, this has probably been the most difficult vehicle to launch. And the reason being is that it's fairly lightweight, it's front wheel drive, and it has tons of torque. And so when you put all these factors together, if your throttle application isn't perfect, it's not a very forgiving system and you're just gonna get a ton of wheel spin, and so your time's gonna be bad. Now this car is capable of very good time, somewhere in the five and a half second range if it's done perfectly. But as you can see, these are not perfect conditions. It's raining and it's been raining all week, so the ground is soaked. Uh, and that said, I'm only gonna do this a couple times, so I'm sure my time isn't gonna be that great. So don't look at my time as being the benchmark for it. Uh, it's certainly possible to do better, especially if the throttle application is perfect and you have dry conditions. Now it's worth mentioning how I'm going to be timing the 0 to 60. So I've done the math based on the gear ratios, the final drive ratio, and the size of the tires. And basically what happens is in second gear, this should hit the rev limiter at 6800 RPM at exactly 60 miles per hour. So the way I'm going to time it is take the time from a stop till when it gets to the rev limiter in second gear, which is at 6800 RPM. And regardless of what the speedometer reads there, which will probably be around 58, 59, I'm gonna take that time and that'll be close enough to our zero to 60 time. So for my zero to 60 test, I'm going to leave traction control on, otherwise it's just gonna spin the tires. I'm gonna try and feather the throttle so that I'm not getting too much wheel spin and try and keep it at peak grip. But of course, you know, that's easier said than done. So I'm gonna just gonna ease onto the throttle from first gear and we'll see what happens. Just getting wheel spin, just getting wheel spin, still spinning, and there's 60. Okay, so let's try a pull. We're gonna try and be light with the throttle application so we don't get much wheel slip. Still plenty of wheel slip. Okay, so we're gonna try this one more time, but this time what we're gonna do differently is leave it in second gear. And before you think that's a crazy idea, second gear in this car is actually more aggressive than its reverse gear, which is very strange. You rarely ever see that in cars. And also, since we're in a situation where we're traction limited, we can eliminate the time it takes to shift, and because we're traction limited, it shouldn't uh, make the time any slower. So we'll see what happens. We'll try launching in second gear, once again leaving the traction control on, and then trying to modulate the throttle to limit wheel spin. Now it's been raining this whole week so I haven't actually taken a decibel reading of what the interior noise level is like without it raining, but that said, it has been decently quiet in here. You could certainly hold a conversation. It doesn't seem to be on the loud end. You get a little bit of road noise, um, not too much wind noise, and of course you can hear the rain when it's raining. So I mean, that's just a given, uh, but overall a decent quiet interior. So thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.
getting wheel spin.